Now let me make it clear before we start. I don't think Twitter is going to be suddenly turned off, and I don't think that its user base are going to suddenly disappear. I think if Twitter Inc. is consumed by creditors and administrators, they're not going to splinter it into a thousand pieces and cast it into the winds. But, like a man under 50 wearing a smoking jacket, things aren't looking good. So, why do I, someone who is an expert in absolutely nothing other than counting my own hair follicles at exponentially greater speeds, think that Twitter is falling, in terms of social media prestige and in terms of potential success? Well, the last three months of 2016 showed Twitter's slowest quarterly revenue growth since it floated in 2013. Twitter's never made a profit, although its revenue has been increasing and its loss decreasing. Although notice that its net loss didn't decrease as much as its revenue increased. Twitter's 2016 revenue looks a lot better than 2015's, but Q4's revenue growth of 2016 was just 1% on Q3's. The fourth quarter's net loss was also substantially larger than the net loss in Q3. Oh, September 2016. We were so young back then. Twitter can't grow its revenue without growing its user base, and it can't grow its user base without, well, being better. Twitter was founded in 2016 with the initial idea of being an SMS platform where users could share their 140 character limited thought to the world, or, well, a tiny slice of the Twitter user base. That obviously grew to the point where text, links, photos, and all sorts of bullshit emoticons can be sent. Twitter grew rapidly, with around 5,000 tweets sent a day in 2007, and in 2010, around 50 million sent a day. A problem, deemed only minor by the techno gods, was that it didn't make any money. But who cares? Its user base was growing so rapidly, people were just investing and worrying about monetizing it later. Until the later half of 2014, its growth showed no signs of slowing. On the 6th of November, 2013, 70 million shares, at $26 a share, were issued by lead underwriter, vampire squid purple monkey dishwasher, Goldman Sachs, and Twitter floated on the New York Stock Exchange. So why, from that situation, did we get to the point where arseholes like me, and more importantly, arseholes like Business Insider and SJW, I mean Wall Street Journal, are talking about 2017 being make or break for Twitter? As Philip DeFranco recently said, audiences are loyal to people, not brands. So is a figure we can hone in on, like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs or Elon Musk or Mark Zuckerberg necessary? Well, no, no, we, no, no. Acer is still a successful company and no one cares who's running that. Sorry, Jason Cheng. Look at the so far immensely successful Snapchat, run by Evan Spiegel, Bobby Murphy and Reggie Brown. Isn't that the original lineup of Redbone? Anyway, no doubt known to some people, none of those three have captured the public's attention anywhere near as much as Mark Zuckerberg. But Snapchat is in a very different position to Twitter. Snapchat has less than half the user base of Twitter, however, even with slowed growth, it continues to outperform. Maybe its future, thanks to a concerted effort by Facebook, isn't as rosy as it once was, but it's too early to call time on Snapchat yet. Jack Dorsey is one of the founders and the current CEO of Twitter. A lot less has been made about him than Mark Zuckerberg, but maybe that's because Twitter at least appears to be a lot less innovative than Facebook. We constantly hear about changes to Facebook, the way it handles news, the way it favours certain things, the way it polices its own content. It seems to me Twitter hasn't really changed that much over the last 10 years, maybe with the exception that you can now view pictures without having to leave the platform. Amazing. The brand of Twitter, once new and exciting as I suppose everything once is, is now playing catch up. At first they kind of touted that this was the platform where you could say everything, unlike Facebook which is a bit like having tea at a very angry old woman's house. But now after being filled with porn, spam and ISIS, they've started to crack down. Although still, if you're going to talk about online bullying, you're probably going to be talking about Twitter. Your beliefs are incorrect. Mine are superior. Ah, oh, put an extra space. I think something important to note is advertising on Twitter. You can pay to have a tweet promoted and put near the top of someone's timeline. 
but the problem is it's very easy to just scroll past and not look at at all. Another problem for Twitter, which I think really does affect its business, is a lot of it is just mass advertising anyway. Look at this screenshot where I've cleverly cropped the embarrassing tabs out of view. Notice that the first and last tweet from two completely separate accounts are exactly the same. Number two and three are ads for products, and the video is from a guy who describes himself as a music promoter. It's another ad. I don't follow back 7,000 people anymore, I just follow people I like, and there's a lot of really funny accounts on Twitter, but good God is there a lot of rubbish too. Of Twitter's recent growth, I don't know, but I would guess that a small but significant number of individual users have left, and a lot of new people coming in are either small businesses or people acting on behalf of them, often with 20 or 30 accounts being run by a single person. There still is good stuff on Twitter, there's still a lot of funny accounts, and it's still a good place to go for news and rumours. But on the business side, with so much of the platform being used for self-promotion, and so much of that self-promotion becoming near identical because of the character limit, I'd struggle to see why a small business, or any business, would advertise on there, when it seems like Google Ads is a far better option. Because of the nature of tweets, it kind of feels like you could reach more people with more personality if you just wore a sandwich board and used different coloured chalks. In fact, sometimes, I'm almost sure that the entire thing is a conspiracy, and seven people are responsible for writing the entirety of Twitter. That's how repetitive it is sometimes. But then, I am the social media Grinch. And the Christmas Grinch. And the public meetings Grinch. Talks of Twitter being acquired have seen it being passed on by Google, Disney, and Microsoft, and increased speculation about what the situation really is like in Twitter High Command, especially seen as it looked as though Twitter was making up some of those takeover bids to get attention. Rupert Murdoch, would you like to buy back MySpace? Elon Musk is interested. No, not just him. Toyota as well. And uh, Scrooge McDuck. LucasArts. Twitter cut 9% of its workforce in 2016. It's now lost almost $3 billion since it went public. Q4, I'm sick of saying Q4, in 2016 saw ad revenue lower than Q4 in 2015. Q4, Q4. Its tweaks may have made the platform nicer for current users to use, but it's not bringing in new people who want to tweet pictures of their Kaiser salad. Yeah, I said Kaiser salad. It's two pieces of bread with a shitload of bacon. And no salad. Obviously many of its users, maybe most of its users, will stay on the platform no matter what. And I myself will continue with the platform, making a half assed attempt to tweet out something every now and then which doesn't make me die of self-loathing. Is Twitter dead? No. But if I was on the board, I'd spend most of my time throwing whiteboard erasers at Jack Dorsey's head and telling him to get various body parts out of his own ass. But then, that'd just be another building in San Francisco I've been banned from. Thanks for joining me on this bizarre summary. Be sure to check in next time where I'll be talking about something else weird or stupid or bizarre. And don't forget to look at my videos where I talk about films. I mean, you know, if you like films. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and you're more than welcome to follow me on Twitter. Although if you can only do one of those things, hit the subscribe button. I mean, you can follow me on Twitter, but to be honest with you, I couldn't care less.